Troubleshooting security. So what are some symptoms that you may have of security issues? You may get things like pop-ups in your web browser. You may get browser redirections, security alerts, slow performance, internet connectivity issues, your PC locks up, your Windows updates fail, you get rogue antivirus, spamming, rename system files, your files start disappearing or their permissions are changing, hijacked emails and access denied issues. All of these can be issues that we have to deal with when we start talking about security. So the first one we're talking about is pop-ups in your web browser. Have you ever opened up your screen and it looks like this, where you just got like tons and tons of ads all over your screen? Uh, if so, you probably have some spyware. It's usually the cause. Uh, the way to get rid of it is you want to scan your workstation with an anti-spyware solution, uh, clear your internet cache, and delete your cookies. Okay. So something like Spybot Search and Destroy was great to get rid of a lot of Spybot uh, spyware stuff, and that'll help get rid of a lot of this advertisements from you and a lot of these pop-ups. So web browser redirection. Um, this is where you're trying to go to say google.com and every time you type in google.com it takes you someplace else. The cause of this can be some sort of malware, whether it's a virus, a worm, or a trojan. Your solution for this is obviously if it's a virus, worm, or trojan, you got to use antivirus to get rid of it, right? Any malware solution. Once you're done with that, you want to go in and check your LAN settings. Um, you'll go in and make sure that there's not some sort of a proxy set up if you're not supposed to have a proxy. As a home user, you're not using a proxy. In a business environment, you may be. So what you'll do is you'll go in there to LAN settings. Under Internet Options, click on Connections, and go to LAN settings. Notice at the bottom here we have this 33.54.14.67. Does anybody know where that is? I don't, right? It's not my proxy server. So that means I probably was had. And if I look that up, it might be some hacker in the eastern Ukraine or something like that, right? And so what we want to do is clear that data out of there. We'll delete it and then uncheck the use the proxy server and then hit OK. The other place you want to check is what's called the host INI file because in the host INI file you actually can make, it's a file on your computer that acts as DNS. It's the first place your computer looks when you say to go to a website. So you can use this to play tricks on your friends but hackers can use it to play tricks on you as well. So for instance my daughter had been acting up and using YouTube too much so one of the things I did was I ended up going into her host INI file and I said every time she types in youtube.com it would resolve to my website. And so every time she tried to go to YouTube it would pull up daddy's website. And it made her very upset, right? Uh, <laughs> and she couldn't figure out why. Um, and it didn't matter if she went to www.youtube.com or youtube.com, it kept going over to daddy's website. Um, and so I fixed that and, and, you know, and by doing that host INI file. Again, if a hacker does that to you, we might be able to get in there and change your host INI file so every time you type in bankofamerica.com it goes to their server and you'll never know the difference, right? So you got to check that host INI file, make sure it isn't corrupted and make sure it hasn't been messed with. Security alerts. If you start getting security alerts, that's your symptom. The cause could be a virus, a worm, or a trojan. So again, we want to scan with anti-malware solutions. Uh, we want to see if we have a virus. And if we do, we want to go through our virus remediation steps we talked about previously, right? We'll turn off system restore, we'll clear the virus, we'll reinstall, uh, we'll re-enable the system restore, uh, and if we need to, we can go back to a previously known state. Uh, this is a security alert that is what it would look like when you get a virus. In this case, the virus was win32.zali.b, okay? It's a high-risk virus, and it tells you this is a worm trojan program, okay? Uh, and its job is to record keystrokes and take screenshots of your computer stealing your personal information. Doesn't sound like something we want, right? So in this case, we are going to block it um, and we're going to remove it using um, the uh, security center. Slow performance. If you have slow performance, it could be malware, it could be spyware, it could be adware. Any of these will slow down your computer. Uh, and so uh, what we want to do is we want to scan the workstation with any malware, any adware solutions. Okay. Uh, we want to verify system services and background processes are minimized so we're not loading up 50 things every time we turn on our computer and again we do that through msconfig or the services.msc console and again we'll play with those in the lab. Internet connectivity issues. Uh, malicious users and malware can cause this for you. Uh, you want to scan the workstation with antivirus. Again you want to verify your proxy settings in the web browser and verify your network settings. If you're having trouble connecting uh, make sure you double check those settings, make sure they're working properly for you. A lot of the same stuff you're seeing, right? It's malicious stuff, run antivirus, right? If it's malicious and slow, maybe a service or a startup issue. 
In this case, you have a PC that locks up. On a Macintosh, the way we get things that lock up is we get the spinning beach ball of death. Uh, on Windows, it just kind of sits there and everything just kind of halts, right? Uh, and that can be a cause based on malware, spyware, or adware. Again, that slowdown gets to the point where nothing is happening now. Again, you're going to scan it with any malware, any adware solutions. Verify your system startups and background processes are all proper. Windows updates failures. So you're trying to configure Windows updates and install security patches, and they fail. What does that mean? It means you've probably already been had by malware. Uh, so in this case, you need to scan the workstation with any malware solution. And again, you may need to perform a system restore back to a previously known good state and then perform the update. If you can't install a security update, it means somebody's probably already hacked you and has blocked you from doing it so they can maintain their access. Uh, rogue antivirus. So rogue antivirus, uh, the cause of that is if a user installs a program or clicks a malicious link through a social engineering campaign. So this is what uh, Nicholas was talking about earlier. You get a browser pop-up and it's like, your computer is infected with a virus and it looks like it's antivirus, right? I think there's one that was like PC Clean 2K or something like that was one of the ones that was going by a while ago. Um, this particular browser right here looks like it's an antivirus program that has performed a scan and is saying, oh, you've got all these errors. Click here to, to fix it. I mean, you click there, you actually install malware on your system, and now you're infected. And then they want you to pay them money to fix it. So again, using antivirus software will help protect it. Remove the product if you installed it, uh, and get it cleaned up. Spam. Your symptom of spam is spam. <laughs> uh, we're all pretty familiar with spam at this part. At this point, uh, the cause of it is malicious users or bulk advertisers. Uh, the best way to get rid of it is use an anti-spam filter. And many web-based programs, such as Gmail, already do uh, provide a really good spam filter. So spam is kind of uh, still annoying. It uses up a ton of bandwidth and a ton of resources, but it's not that um, serious of an issue for us anymore. Uh, renaming system files. If you start seeing system files that are renamed, this means that you probably had some malicious scripts, malware, or malicious users on your computer. So if you notice here at the top, I have servicehost.exe. You look at the bottom, I have servicehost.com. Which one's the correct one? Servicehost.exe is what it should be. So since it was, uh, once, it, once it was renamed, it was done as a malicious program, it's probably because they've changed that file some way. And they want me to believe that it's really the original. To get rid of that, we're going to use the system file checker we talked about earlier. So we'll do SFC slash scan now. It will scan it, find that that is a malicious file, delete it, and repair it for you. What do you do when files start disappearing? So here, look, notice up here we have substit, service host, and SXS trace. Go down below, service host disappeared. Um, this can also be caused by malicious scripts, malware, malicious users, or accidental deletion. If it does, restore it from a backup or a shadow copy. And again, you want to scan for ant with antivirus to make sure you don't have any malware on your computer. Hijacked emails. What do you do if your email has been hijacked? Often this is caused by a social engineering campaign or somebody guessing your password. Why would they hijack your email? So they can then use your email as a jumping off point to do malicious activity. Okay? Um, if this happens to you, you want to change your password immediately. Make sure you're changing your email password to a complex password and changing it frequently. Yes? How would you know? Um, often you'll know if somebody that you are friends with tells you, hey, I got this email from you, and you're like, I never sent you an email. Um, a good example of this, one of the scams that was going on for a while was they would break into people's emails, especially teenagers or young adults in college, and then they would go and find in their emails grandma's and grandpa's email address information. They would then email grandma or grandpa and say, Grandma and Grandpa, I've been locked up in jail in Mexico. I need $2,000 bail money or they're not going to let me out. Unsuspecting Grandma and Grandpa, go get one of those green dot, uh, debit cards over at Walgreens, put $2,000 on it, call the number that it says there, give them the, quote, bail money, um, and then the crooks have their money, right? Let alone to find out if you call up grandson, he's really still at college over in New York and not in Mexico and never was in Mexico, right? It's a scam. But by using that affinity and by going after people who know you, by using your email address, it really looks like it's you, right? So again, if we can guess your password and we can take over your account, we can then commit fraud against your family members and friends. Um, access denied. So access denied, if you start trying to get to a file that you should have access to, for instance, here, I'm trying to get to my file, and it tells me it's denied. 
Well, maybe something like a malicious script, malware, or malicious uh, actors have gone and taken control of those files. They've put malware in them and are using them as their jumping off point. So again, scan with anti-malware and verify your file permissions are set properly. What do you do if you get antivirus, anti-malware, and anti-spyware? You want to make sure you have good ones installed. It gives you real-time protection against known virus threats, detection and removal of viruses, and again, for malware, it does the same thing, but for all malware, not just viruses. Spyware, focusing again on spyware. There's three types of ways that we can do this. One is called heuristics, one is called signatures, and one is called behavioral detection. Um, you don't need to know the definitions of these for the exam, but just to give you an idea, heuristics, work based on looking at certain patterns inside the malware. So it, it was more likely to catch new um, types of malware than other types are. Signature is actually looking for a certain bit code. It has a detailed signature that is matching. And so it only knows and catches viruses that it has seen before. Behavioral, it's gonna flag on things whether they are look suspicious or based on a signature or a heuristic pattern. It's kind of a mixture of both. So system restore, one of the ways that we can fix things. We can enable us to fix our problems that are caused by defective hardware and software um, by reverting to a restore point known as our last known good configuration. And again, we do that under the system protection tab using our system restore feature. The recovery console. Sometimes your system gets so messed up that you can't work with it from the hard drive, so you have to boot from the CD. When you boot from the CD or DVD, you're using the Windows recovery environment, which is this set of tools here on the left, and it allows us to go in and get to a command prompt where we can then do what we need to do and recover the system. We talked about the event viewer before. We can use that to find out what bad things have happened at certain times and days and what programs did them. And the last thing we have here is a sample question. A user has downloaded and installed a browser add-on that caused the browser to hang. The PC has been running very slow uh, when, once it was rebooted. Which of the following should he do to, to troubleshoot the problem? Should he run system restore, update antivirus, and run an antivirus scan? Should he remove all internet temporary files, run an antivirus scan, and reboot using the last known good configuration? Should we remove all temporary files, turn off system restore, update and run an antivirus scan? Should we run an antivirus scan, run our disk cleanup, and reboot into safe mode? What do you guys think? Yeah, option three, right? C. Remove all of our temporary files, turn off our system restore, update and run an antivirus scan. Now why is that the right answer? Because if we had gotten this browser add-on, it's probably still sitting in our temporary files, our cache. We turn off our system restore before we start scanning and clearing the virus. Otherwise, it's just going to keep being stuck in there and we won't be able to clear it out. So we'll turn off the system restore, we'll clean up the issue, and then we'll turn back on the system restore. Okay? So that's the way we want to attack that problem.